<laughs> if we begin this story at the end and work our way backwards, a young man's gravestone would be a logical place to start. Chris Kimes. The last thing I said to him, how proud I am of him and what an honor it was for me to be his mom. Or maybe we tell you about the plaque placed in Chris's honor in Pioneer Square and show you what we saw the other day, that nobody noticed the plaque or bothered to look down. But if they only knew what this young man did 10 years ago, maybe you do. Maybe we should start there. At the beginning, before any shiny gravestone, weathered plaque, yeah. before the unbearable grief. <laughs> This is how it all started. This story about love and life. Yes, out of this. Impossible at the time to imagine that anything good could have come from all of this madness. Yeah. Kim Kime Parks remembers that winter night. Oh, like it was yesterday. Yeah, it was a boy from the Mighty Grove. Ray Page remembers thinking. Oh, that's really ugly. That he'd never seen anything like this in Seattle. Back up a few hours and you will see Mardi Gras 2001 in Seattle began as it should have. How did something so beautiful turn so ugly so fast? So many questions. Do you think about him all the time? Yes. Cameron was just nine years old when he lost his big brother Chris, his everything. The thing that I love, the thing I idolize is all of a sudden gone. What? hasn't he been here for, so that's always hard. I actually didn't get to say goodbye to him the way I wanted to. You know, we saw it on television, saw him carrying Chris out of the crowd. Oh no, man, he's probably brain dead. And he was. Gone in a, in a second. After someone in the crowd beat Chris Kime to death. You know how he wound up getting killed, trying to save some, oh, girl from being beat up. Someone he didn't even know. He's a hero in your eyes. Oh, absolutely. A hero for what he did that night. It has helped me tremendous in my grief. And for what Chris Kime continues to do, even 10 years later. Yeah, Chris's story is not done. Yeah. Even though a gravesite and a plaque suggest it is. What did you know about Chris? Nothing. But Larry Levinson knew he was dying. Larry had about two weeks to live, period. Yeah, uh, it was over. He thought his story was written. So the nurse said what? And she said, you're going to be out of here real quick. Meaning? And my heart was coming from Chris Kime. A heart of a hero. Most definitely. I think it was the morning after when the doctor came in and patted me on the foot. He says, you received a kidney of a 20-year-old who died of a head trauma. Chris Kime. And next thing I know, I'm getting his kidney. Yeah, I got his right kidney. Sits down on my front left side. Chris's other kidney. Jesse's left kidney. Went to Jesse Bettis. The kidney just was a miracle. Without Chris's kidney. Death. Jesse got to live long enough to go to her daughter Marcy's wedding. It was just so nice to have her there for all of those special moments. She always made the most of life. The family got six more precious years with her. My only regret is it couldn't have been six more. Jesse would die in 2007. You know, when your soulmate dies, it's kind of like uh, um, half of you goes with her. Her lungs were eventually the what gave out on her, but the kidney was still going strong until like the last week or so. But Chris could save other people. And he did. Chris's gifts of life. Corneas, eyes, uh, bone, skin. We never met the liver recipient. From what I understand, he's still doing fine. Rick Allison has the lung. Rick was in bad shape, too. I don't know how much longer he'd have made it. In fact, we've learned that Rick, even 10 years later, continues to breathe Chris's lungs. The doctor that performed the transplant said he had never seen a healthier set of lungs. There was a young girl about eight years old who had the beginnings of bone cancer in her arm, in her leg. And so they took one of his arm bones and grafted it in. 
No more cancer. There were two people that received the corneas. We lost Martha four years ago, got the pancreas. Do you know how many Chris helped altogether? I want to say 12 or 13. How amazing is that? Larry remembers like it was yesterday, meeting Chris's mom for the first time. She walked up and wrapped herself around me and said, I want to feel that heart. And I want to listen to Chris. And then I put my hand to his chest. Oh my gosh. That was her deal. She could, Chris was still there. This is the reason we're here today, is about Chris. Chris Keim was proud of the fact that he was an organ donor. His decision. Yes, it was my son. He and his mother and brother have made it their mission to tell the world to how important the that is. Donors family they point to their to new the family. Recipients. Perfect. Perfect match. As proof. Keeps me alive. Oh, Chris. Where's Uncle Chris? Chris never got to know his nephews, Zachary and Christian. He doesn't see me. No, he doesn't see you. It would have broken his heart to learn that both boys have a liver disease. And so there's a possibility that when both of my grandsons are in their 20s or early 30s, they might possibly need a liver transplant. So now I have kids that could possibly need this gift that we were able to give to people. It affects everybody, everybody. I'm sure you said thank you many times in your life. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Probably every day. All because of a young man who left behind something no one could take from him, even when someone took his life. It basically went beyond just a gift of life. Um, it, was, uh, it was a gift of love. When I think about that heart, I think it's Chris's heart still. That gift. Works fantastic. To help others. I'm still running. They're still working. Live. Thanks to Chris. Yeah. You betcha. He's the reason I'm here talking to you. John Sharifi. What a gift. What a gift. King 5 News.